What's up, guys? It's Team Stamp West, Discraft Underground, Team Captain. We are back after a break. Alex, how have you been? Doing wonderful. Awesome. I'm super excited this week. We have Mrs. Hannah Macbeth. Hi, guys. How are you? Okay, Wes, what do you have for Hannah? Yeah, so uh, we're going to start out with one of our usual questions. Uh, I feel like you kind of just popped up in the disc golf world, a super bright, outgoing personality, but I don't know if we've heard how you got your start playing disc golf. Oh, gosh. Um, okay, so I got my start playing disc golf um, basically when I was seeing this guy, uh, a couple, obviously, like, five or six years ago or whatever. Um, and I met him and his whole friend group and we all became really good friends. And I left for a college for a weekend trip. And when I, before I left, everybody was getting together and playing soccer, which I've been playing since I was four. So I was really hype. And then when I came back from this trip, everyone was playing disc golf. And I was like, this is so not, that's not the same as soccer. And I was the kind of player who was like, driving 90 like you know an hour to go play with like all these brazilian guys and like you know paying an arm and a leg just to play the sport and i didn't want to stop playing soccer um but i couldn't find anyone to play with <laughs> so i went out with them and i watched them play at like pyramids and maple hill um for those of you who don't, don't know i'm originally from massachusetts watch them play a little bit and um after about five or six times of watching my friends throw discs into trees and into the water and I'm just not a sit back and watch kind of person. So I asked the guy that I was seeing um, if he could teach me how to play. So him and one of my best friends, um, Nick Carl, who's actually on the underground team, as well as Matt Graham, who's like the co-owner and founder of Kids Disc Golf. Um, just all the shout outs. Shout so out. they kind of taught me the ropes. Um, I started playing, I went to leagues at pyramids. I met like some of the most incredible people who I'm still friends with now, just because I would get like random draw doubles partners with them. Mm -hmm. And, um, I didn't like have a PGA number or anything. I just was playing cause I thought it was a game, um, because it is, but you know what I mean? Yep. So then I went to college and Liberty actually has a really popular club team, um, for disc golf, but they didn't have very many women. So I went to a fair at my school that was like back to school thing, saw that they had a disc golf team. I signed up like right away. I got a jersey with my name on it. I got like all this really cool stuff. And I went to, and it was the same thing. It was like not really weeklies. Um, the college disc golf organization wasn't really like all the way there at that point. This was like, you know, a while ago, but, um, played like the weeklies that were part of like the college tournament and um, played and just kept playing. And I think my favorite like go-to disc at that time that I didn't understand wasn't a distance driver was a buzz SS, which I think is really funny. Sorry. Um, but anyways, so yeah, I got into college disc golf and then um, because of the influence of Nick Carl and Massachusetts disc golf with Maple Hill being like, a big spot for people who are touring all over the road and like all over the world. Um, I met Paige Pierce at a tournament and I met Paul at that tournament. And um, after I met Paul, I started taking disc golf a lot more seriously because I've been an athlete and competed in sports my whole life. And um, he just started teaching me things. Like if you hang out with the guy for a long time, he just teaches <laughs> you things and you just like, start to get better and kind of wonder like why you couldn't not like oh well if he's doing it why can't I do it it was more of like there's it just looked so fun like it just looked so much like what I wanted to do um and so I actually have like kind of a funny story so when I was playing collegiate disc golf for liberty um I went to collegiate nationals and I met Zoe Andyke who's actually like super amazing and wonderful and so nice for any of you who have the pleasure um, anyway, she was watching me throw like standstill buzz SS's the entire time and not questioning my abilities at all and wondering why I'm not throwing more than a mid range. Um, but anyway, <laughs> she said like, wow, you have the potential to go pro in this sport. Like you're, you're really good, like naturally, like, you know, whatever. And I just remember calling my mom and or talking to my mom and being like, mom, 
this woman that I met today at Collegiate Nationals, she told me that I could be a professional disc golfer. And my mom was literally like, okay, you're not in college to become a professional disc golfer, so can you chill out? And I was like, <laughs> she was right, but like now, <laughs> like, what Zoe knew, <laughs> Zoe knew. Yeah, Zoe did know. Yeah, if I ever win like a major, an NT or like just anything, because I have no pro wins yet, I'm just gonna be like, I just want to thank God and also Zoe for believing in me. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so cool. Such a big supporter. Awesome. Uh, and to answer your question, that's kind of how I got started in disc golf was just, I happened to be in a friend group that started playing and then it just happened to be around wherever I went, you know, um, even when my relationship didn't work out and I met Paul and we became really good friends and started dating, like he was a pro. So it's just, it's just always been something in my life that I've gone to for like, to relieve stress and just, it's always just been an outlet for me. So Nice. That's, so cool. That's awesome. But well, we saw you, obviously you're a pro now out hitting the tour and we saw you make a very candid post on Instagram, which if you guys don't follow Hannah on Instagram, go follow her right now. We got her handle on the, on one directly side. Directly above right? you. Directly above you. Oh, directly above me. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and you mentioned that you're working on a lot of things going into the 2020 season. So what type of disc golf related things are you working on as you're getting ready to hit the road here in a couple of weeks. Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, I've been pretty quiet this off season with social media, just because I've switched sponsors last year. I was on Innova and this year I signed with Discraft for 2020. I'm really excited about that. Woo. That explains why I'm on the podcast in the first place. <laughs> um, so <laughs> for those of you that don't know, <laughs> surprise. Um, but anyway, <laughs> So I've been really quiet because last year I looked to a lot of people for not like justification, but just acceptance. And I like um, crave like that kind of affirmation. And I think that's within our culture, just with social media being so, so, so mainstream. Um, we post things that we do all the time from like cooking to breathing to like using the bathroom to like <laughs> working out to like feeding our dog. And we're just like, like, like so um I did that a lot last year and I was really embarrassed when my hard work didn't pay off um like I literally was embarrassed and I just didn't want to do that to myself again so this year I've been working twice as hard um with getting in shape and learning how to maintain that and then eating properly and um not like dieting or anything um just like getting the good stuff in yeah and then with my just skills. Paul has worked with me so much this off season and I've just taken the time to just shut up already and go to the field and throw. Um, and I haven't talked about it, you know, because it's just disc golf is, I come from team sports and disc golf is just personal. It's just a personal sport. Like, you know, you can only rely on yourself and you're going to get out of it what you put in. There's not going to be that one star player on your team. That's going to carry you through, you know, um, not really. And so, that's kind of how I had to look at things. Um, so I've been doing everything that everyone else is doing. I've just been really like very low key about it. Um, and it just makes it like so much easier when you are because you just do it because you want to and you want it for yourself instead of being like, if I don't do it, Haley King's going to see that I didn't putt for 45 <laughs> today. And, putts. Oh, oh, Lord. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> So, but, but at the same time, like it works for some people, for me, that's just where I'm at. Yeah, so. So that cool. makes sense. I think uh, I came from a I'm soccer like, background. I'm like answering your questions, but like going like the long way. Oh, it's perfect. That's, that's perfect. great. No, that's the, that's the, that's the content we're interested in. Oh, yeah. great. Nailed yeah. it. But I, I came from a soccer background as well. And, uh, eventually just had like too many injuries to really keep going down the soccer path. And that was kind of how I got more into disc golf myself. So I can totally get it. You know, the team, the team aspect where you have maybe your key guys that are really uh, skilled and really a bigger part of the team versus disc golf. It's, it's just you and uh, your work and your results are, are a hundred percent on you. So. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, wildly enough, I also come from a soccer background. So it's, uh, 
it's yeah and we've got a three aside team right here yeah um but no no it's 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 magical it's like hannah steals all soccer players from disc golf and forms mega team (laughs) that's great but yeah no it's it's that kind of that that team mentality like when i was an undergrad i was playing a bunch of soccer playing a bunch of pickup games and then i ended up getting pulled into ultimate by a couple friends and then just because of how everything progressed you end up walking around a disc golf course just like amazed that you can walk in nature and be doing something alongside it right yeah Um, and you don't have a team to do it you can just go wake up and go play um it's not like golf which is like expensive and intense and scary and you don't really know like am i allowed here i remember one time like after a master's i have so many stories you guys (laughs) (laughs) like after Masters Cup in like 2017, I was it was my first time there, and Braden Coolidge, the TD, had like helped, um, had just like we were there for an extra day, so he was like, "Oh, you guys want to play like a couple holes of golf?" And so him and Paul played golf, and I had just worn like a dry fit shirt. And when we got there, Braden was like, "Oh yeah, like you probably should have wore a polo." And I was like, "Are you serious?" And he's like, "No, I'm just kidding. Like it doesn't matter." <laughs> I was like, oh, like golf is so scary, and I feel yeah. like disc golf you can show up and like. A banana suit and it's like fine it's like, actually people. preferred yeah preferred <laughs> preferred unless it's a pdga major with you know I'm, dress codes actually Go that's ahead. a that's a good point though i'd love to see i'd love to see one of our one of our big time pros show up in a banana suit or some i mean like it gets close with people folks like nico with his swirly shirts and, and eagle with his with his uh wild pants but somebody going all out in a costume at a tournament would be i mean the nantucket open would be a great one for something like Ooh. that that yeah nope well we have a giveaway and we have to give a big shout out to andrew mills andrew p mills for donating this disc he said to make sure to use it on a good video and so we have one of those today oh and- Good video geez no pressure no pressure we have the new page pierce fierce test flight a nice green blue swirly one look at those colors red stamp this thing is sweet i know we were talking about it a little bit before so in order to be entered to win this bad boy or bad girl whatever it may be uh we're gonna do something a little bit different <laughs> A little bit different uh, this week from disc golf. We know that you and Paul love Harrison. He's obviously a big part of uh, you guys' yeah. life. So let's have people comment your favorite dog breed down in the comments or just your dog's name or something dog related. And uh, we'll go through and we'll pick a, a random comment for a winner. <laughs> Wonderful. That's awesome. So um, back to back to you, Hannah. You've had a very large spotlight on you for one reason or another since you uh, started your career. Uh, So we're curious, what has your experience been like with all that added attention? We were just talking about it a bit with the the idea of social media having a big impact on kind of how you were preparing. But what is it like, what does it feel like to have that attention on you throughout your entire career? Oh, gosh. I remember the first time I realized the attention was when I stepped out in 2015 at USCGC and Paul had just asked me to be his girlfriend like a week before. Um, And so I walked with him and I remember at that point I had only ever seen him compete um, at Maple Hill and I wasn't watching him. I was just walking around because Paige Pierce invited me to walk around and when Paige Pierce invites you to walk around, you just (laughs) say, um, and so and then I watched him at Worlds in Pittsburgh, but he was up by like 17 strokes. And also like I was just in the gallery. And so this was the first time that I came in front of the gallery and was someone. Um, and I still didn't really understand like what pro disc golf was, but I saw just like, I just remember walking out and everyone, I don't, have you guys ever walked like with the pros before? Yeah. It's yeah. like crazy. Like the first time, like you like think like, oh, whatever. But then you like walk and you're like, you're like, yeah. am I, am I good? Like, oh, it's so like, it's a lot. And for someone who just naturally is sensitive to those kinds of things, it was like a lot. But I was like, I really like this guy, and like, I don't really care that much about like disc golf. 
I just think it's fun. And like, you know, it wasn't like that for me. So, but anyway, um, yeah, ever since then it's not stopped. Um, I mean, how do, I don't, I don't really know how I handle it. I try to be like really gracious. I try to surround myself with people who are not in the disc golf community. Um, so I can remember what it's like to not be in it. Um, I think it's really easy to get wrapped up in everything and kind of ignore messages on Instagram and not really make time to do signings and like autographs and like clinics or, or just say hi to people. It's really easy as the season goes on and you get really tired um, to just not be that person. I don't ever want to become that person. So um, as far as like when I first started playing, I'm really sorry. This is like a terrible way of answering. There's just like a lot. Yeah, um, no, you're good. It's hard. Okay. So all my ladies out there who better be watching this podcast know and understand, um, what it's like to be a girl in sports, especially on a guy's team. Um, so that's kind of how playing disc golf was for me. Um, and what I mean by that is anytime I did something good, people were like, oh my gosh like go off like you are amazing wow like i knew you could do it i believed in you the whole time like why i said i said paul Macbeth's significant other she was gonna and then when i wouldn't do something they would be like well obviously that she can't do anything because she's blah 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 and she's mm -hmm. over and so it was like i never had just like the ability to come in under the radar <laughs> like, i could never just show up to a tournament and like no one would know who I was everyone kind of already had like an impression or they had heard of me or they would see like I remember I played like an XC tier in North Carolina one time um because my friends were going to it and someone was like why do you have Nate Sexton's European open tag on your bag and I was like oh um <laughs> well, he's my friend. <laughs> They're like, wow, you know Nate Sexton? And I was like, yeah, he's he's everyone's friend, man. <laughs> and yeah. so I had like, eventually they were like, you look really familiar. I feel like I've seen you before. And then they would come out like, oh, are you Paul McBeth's girlfriend? Um, and it, it, it was hard because um, it's, it's even hard now. Like, you know, I do things like switch companies and half of the people around me want to make a big deal about it. And the other half want to just be like, you're not a big deal. Like shut up already. You don't even have a win yeah. in pro yet. Relax. Yeah. Um, and so it's this constant struggle of knowing when to um, just, you know, talk myself up, especially if I'm talking to a sponsor um, or just be humble and like, you know, I'm no one versus like, well, I have like 21,000 followers on Instagram. So I'm not exactly no one, but like at the same time, I don't really have a lot of accolades in disc golf, but at the same time, it's like, well, so it's just like very difficult. Um, and one thing I do want to say is, um, the first time I really struggled with it was, uh, I know I already said like USCGC and everything, but one of the I, I'm really sorry. I have so many stories. <laughs> You're just like, oops, we lost her. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, um, no, but one of the first times I really struggled with it and realized um, that people were really mad about the opportunities that I was getting and like kind of started to realize like it's not all fun and games. Like people are upset that you um, – have these opportunities and they don't was when um, I just graduated college and I um, I uh, obviously was dating Paul and he said do you want to come to Europe with me and we were going to Kona Peach Day and I'd never been to the Czech Republic before and I was really excited um, and so I was like absolutely and he's like I'll pay for the trip um, and it was obviously covering my trip but um I'll pay for the trip and uh, it'll be like your birthday, graduation, Christmas, New oh. Year, Valentine's Day, like present. And I was like, wow. So um, I went and he said, do you want to play? Like you should play. And I was like, uh, yeah, I was like, oh, that'd be so cool. Like, would it be cool? Like, and he's like, yeah, it's so easy. Like we stay on the place 
we say at the place where the tournament is, all you have to do is walk to your tea time. And I was like, oh, that's great. So, um, so I was like, that's great. And I signed up and then I was like, cool, I'm just going to be this 832 or like 870 rated player that just like swooped right in there and I'm going to play and it's just going to be for fun because it's my birthday and it's Europe and my first time going to Europe and whatever. And then all of America was like, oh, Hannah Macbeth is going feature card vote. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and, um, then like you see, I was sponsored by Discmania because I made a joke with UC before the Las Vegas challenge that I was like, if I win this tournament, you have to sponsor me. And he was like, oh, haha, okay. And then I won the AM side by like 17 strokes. And then he was like, oh crap, I better sponsor her. So he did. And then when I got to Europe, UC was like, hey, you're going to be a photo shoot, do an ulti world article. And I might have you be part of this Discmania clinic. And I was like, I'm literally, I was like, I'm literally just here because it's my birthday. Like, can we just, and so what that did is it made people think that I was taking everything so much more seriously than I was ready to, um, because I wasn't, I really wasn't, I was 870 something or 860 something rated. I was only there because it was a gift and I wasn't ready to be like, you know, announced to the world that I was playing pro. And the only reason I was playing pro is because that's all they had. Um, and I just got a lot of mix. That's like when I started to realize like, oh, like people have a certain kind of way. Um, some people were excited for me. Some people were like, oh, you're so awesome. I'm so glad that you're playing disc golf. This is so great. It's great for Paul. Some people were like, you are ruining his life and you're ruining my life. So stop. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I got talked about on um, like a radio or like a uh, podcast. And I was literally no one at the time in disc golf. And I was just, yeah, it was a mess. But anyways, um, it kind of made me realize like, I need to get thicker skin. So that happened a lot sooner than I thought. And it just kind of, I mean, it just was just something that we had to deal with. Like, it's not really anything different now. I feel like I'm just used to it. Um, and like I said, I surround myself with people who are level-headed and grounded. It's just, like, it's just not really anything that I can't handle. But it's definitely, um, it definitely gets you from time to time when you're like, when things like this happen, like I switched to just craft and of course they wanted to make it um, very big deal because it's, it was, ha you know, they were really happy um, that mm -hmm. they had like the whole, they have all the Macbeths. Um, they even have John who's Paul's brother. He's on the underground team. And so, um, yeah, you guys know him, I think. <laughs> and so, um, now they have all, our whole family is um, essentially discraft and it's very exciting and they wanted to make a post. And I just wanted to talk about, my viewpoints of it, which is why I said, you know, I know a lot of my opportunities have come from my last name and who I associate myself with and the opportunities um, have been super numerous, but I hope that people focus on what I do with them instead of just like the fact that I'm getting them all the time. Um, because I do try like my absolute hardest and it's kind of just like, it's very different. Most people, you know, they're, they, they come up, like people will be like, oh, Evelina and Hannah, those girls have been playing since they were like younger and they've been like perfecting their game for such a long time. And it's like, for me, like you're gonna see, you're gonna see it, you're gonna see everything. Um, so I do have to like swallow that and just understand that, which is hard, but oh well. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, one thing, one thing that's really interesting and really awesome about your journey is I uh, like like you said you were you were thrust into the spotlight um more or less on a whim but one thing that I've seen and I was, I was doing a little bit of research earlier you've you you've done your best not only to keep your level head in social media or whatever it may be but back it up like that's one thing that's been very apparent is like your rating bumped up like 30 or 40 points in the past year so you're doing it, right? And you're like the coverage on USDGC. It's one thing to be thrust into the spotlight, 
and then go out and do things. But it's another thing to be thrust into the spotlight and then like grab and, and say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to play better. I'm going to be a better representative of the sport. I'm going to get like, I'm going to get my stuff together and focus. Right. So yeah. um, I think that's one thing that we're yeah. going to get yeah. like from see they were like hey can you be a part of this broadcast again and I was like oh my gosh sure because they had me do the sideline reporting the year before and then like a month out we were like Jamie Thomas was like are you ready you're in the big show and I was like and he's like I'm just thinking like Jamie I don't really have to do anything like I just have to walk around and like interview people like what the heck but he's very like um like you know he's just like a big personality and so I was like okay and then he's like no you're gonna be sitting next to me on the couch and I was like what <laughs> so it was um yeah yeah <laughs> so no. it's just the show. like people are just like oh Hannah Macbeth she can do just like pretty much whatever it's fine she'll just figure it out <laughs> yeah. I'm just like no and it's I mean that's kind of that's kind of the the key and obviously bringing the Macbeth family together is important but also bringing the the skills beyond the course but also you started to prove yourself more and more on the course as well so um as we kind of shift into on the course um we do have a very important question about what that might look like uh do you have any info about discs or uh, way too early staples in your bag. Are you able to say anything about your bag? Um, what do you have for us? Yeah, um, I uh, have been testing pretty much everything just to see what I like. I just put a Comet in my bag. Uh, that is freaking such a good mid-range. I promise this time when I'm throwing Discraft, I will be throwing the driver um, <laughs> and the mid-ranges. So, um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited about that. But uh, Buzz SS in my bag, um, Meteor uh, was a disc that I threw a couple of years ago when I was throwing Discraft, and I, I love it. It's a great mid-range. And then a Comet. As far as drivers, I would say Avenger SS, Heat. Uh, those are my like stalker super nice disc um undertaker i guess i mean everybody loves the undertaker it's like super popular so i guess if i'm like mm, i guess like it's just gonna make me seem edgy and like really cool so like no but um, <laughs> no i really like uh the stalker i think a lot and i have a couple others but you know i have like this one 59 nuke that bob found me like in the yeah i don't even know why mm -hmm. but it's really really great and supposedly they'll be running more of the lower weight nukes nukes Ooh. this year i think i have something to do with that um just because i have a little slower arm speed because i refuse to like throw really fast and like have like crazy run up if i don't have good form and i don't have well, okay, now I have good form. Like, I'm going to start speeding that over myself because I've been working really hard, but um, not the kind when I could speed everything up and just, like, handle a, um, a higher-weighted disc. Um, so if anybody out there is struggling and they're wondering why their discs are overstable, uh, maybe just try throwing a lighter weight and, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, a 165 instead of a 175. Um, okay. And also, I like the Avenger SS because I tend to throw more uh hyzer flips and so that's a flippy disc and i just just love it just goes forever wow. and there's also a new disc coming out this year um that i'm not really allowed to talk about because it's very secretive and it's my favorite disc i've ever thrown wow ever. interesting so yeah. what about what about putters what are you throwing for putters yeah you've been playing for two years so i'm like shut up you guys no <laughs> Oh, putters. Um, so I was putting with Luna's because that's what we had downstairs in our uh, facility, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I really like them a lot. They feel really, really good. Uh, but it's been really, really cold. And I recently tried putting with the Paige Pierce um, Fierce putters. Mm -hmm. And you, would you say like Fierce's? Like, what are we going to say? I think it's Fierce. <laughs> like, 
Kind of like moose. It's like it's a page cool. pierce fierce. So I've been putting with the fierce. Okay, yeah, that'll work. And I really like it a lot. It's okay. feels really good in hot and cold. So it's either going to be that or the Luna. I'm coming off of the. Uh, well, I guess I won't say what I'm coming off of because it was kind of bizarre. But yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Interesting. I think they're both good options. Both, <laughs> both, yeah, both beadless options. I think a lot of people are going to be uh, have already been liking the fierce. Obviously, mm-hmm. a lot of people already like the Luna. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> a lot of people. Okay, yeah. but I will say, I love throwing. Okay, so this is the thing. This is where I think it's going to be a perfect union. Is I love throwing the Luna and putting with the fierce. Yeah, like, interesting. When you throw the Luna, like I don't understand. Like sometimes I'll throw it and I'll just turn around and be like why and how yeah. because it goes so far it's not like it's just wild how far that thing can go it gl- yeah, yeah no when i i mean i just it doesn't feel like yeah like, it's like holds it it's yeah. crazy yeah i just made the switch to disrupt as well so one of the first discs i threw was the luna and i remember throwing it after throwing my old putter i started throwing the luna and i was just like what is like what why is this why is it so glidey um so it was wonderful so we do have a fan question from michael mayo um and this actually goes back to one of the conversations we we were having earlier uh are you still planning to do commentary for tournament coverage or any specific media endeavors aligned with this this craft or doing coverage for uh ccdg or the that kind of thing oh um so i'm working with udisc for those of you that don't know, UDisc Live is like an app that you can download to your phone and you can keep all of your stats while you're playing around. They have pretty much every single disc golf course to ever exist ever just like in their database. And so you can access it and it'll bring up a scorecard and you can keep, you know, track and whatever. Um, and so I'm working with them and they are just like the official sponsor of pretty much every tournament <laughs> that's like an here and above. Um, and so you just go to udislive.com and I'm working with them to just like help them put out more content because they're tired of taking pictures of scorecards or baskets all the time. Mm-hmm. And so they just like want to do like some interviews and some social media posts and just like if I want to write an article, which I think I'm going to do soon, um, and just talk about they're pretty much just giving me an opportunity, like a, a platform. Um, and so I'm going to work with them and do like some freelance like stuff. Um, otherwise, if I'm doing commentary, it's because I was hired by Smashbox or the PDGA or Discraft to cover an event or mm-hmm. Jonathan Poole during the USCGC. And every single time I love doing commentary, yeah. I think it's a lot easier for me to do FPO commentary because I'm a lot more interested in FPO. It's mm-hmm. always been really hard for me to be a big MPO fan. Um, I don't really see Paul, like Paul is like, ooh, Paul McBeth. So <laughs> when I watch him compete or I talk about the field that he competes in, I'm just sort of like, I don't have as much excitement about it. Mm-hmm. I think it's because everybody has excitement about it. And so I want to be talking up the women. Um, and so I hope to do a lot more FPO commentary this year, maybe like a, a couple more tournaments, but again, it's all who just contacts me. Everybody knows pretty much that I'm down for whatever. Um, just a matter of it working out, but I am planning to do worlds. I'm not really planning to play worlds. I just really, really, really like doing the commentary. I think it's really fun. And maybe I'll do the commentary for us women's also, because I'm not planning to be there either. Um, they're doing it early posts and we have obligations already. So gotcha. unfortunately, um, that's really interesting. No, that's, um, that's really cool. Um, the, the fact that you're working with you disc is a really interesting thing uh, especially as they start to put out more of their content i think at the time of this video they're doing their top 10 courses in the world it's interesting to see kind of the more stat driven the numbers driven side so it'll be cool to see what you guys come up with uh, yeah and uh, mahmoud barani of central coast and now he's like the 
pro tour uh, media director. Um, he goes by Mo and um, he works with UDISC as well. And he put out a like money themed. Yep. I don't remember what, the name, what was the name of that. It was it, like money talks or something like that. Money, yeah. money disc or something like that. I think yeah. it was a play on money ball. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it was Money Disc. And so he put like these really, really great articles. Um, and so you guys should go read them. Yep. They're really awesome. Uh, and he just yeah. uses exactly that's is just giving people an opportunity to write about things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, Wes, what do you got for us to end the, well, to end this foray, right? Yeah. We have our rapid fires, which I, I'm pretty pumped about these. I feel like I got some good ones. I know I say that a lot. <laughs> But I feel like I feel like these ones are really good. So these ones are going to be short answer, quick answers. We got ten of them, and we're going to roll right through them, rapid fire style. Are you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, ready or not, here they come. First one: Who you got? Chiefs or Niners? Oh gosh, why do you think I'm wearing black? <laughs> <laughs> you got uh, that? No, I think the Chiefs. Chiefs, good choice. Uh, most favorite place that you have traveled inside the U.S. or abroad? Um, you said quick. Dang it. Um, I think Arizona is definitely one of my most favorite places. I grew up in New England. I'm going to just talk fast. I grew up in New England, and so the landscape is unlike anything, and we always stay with the Barella family, and they're amazing, and it's now it's a big Discraft event, so like, hey – but um, that's one of that was one of my favorite places, Arizona, because it's like the deserts, amazing. And then outside of the U.S., I would say when we went to Malta, I really, really loved it. It was really cool, um, and it was not very expensive. Um, so, good answer. Uh, tournament you most look forward to every year? Um, Vermont because I know where my dog is staying. I know where the RV is being parked, and I know that we're gonna have like our kitchen and our own bathroom if we're sharing a unit with other people. And when you have been on the road for a couple of years, those are the things that you look forward to. <laughs> and so, like saying like, ooh, Las Vegas or something, you start to look forward to like the consistency and staying in Vermont is just so consistent. It's just the best, I just love it. Nice. Uh, if Harrison could no longer be named Harrison, what would you name him? <laughs> If he could no longer be named Harrison, uh, yeah. I think we said Ace would be, no, not Ace. Oh gosh. What did we say would be funny? Um, we said like champion or something <laughs> like would be funny. Cause it's like, there's Paul Macbeth and there's his dog champion. It's just like, uh, that's great. Nice. Uh a uh, secluded mountain retreat or, or beachy all-inclusive? Beachy all-inclusive, unless the secluded mountain retreat is during the winter and I can finally go snowboarding because I love snowboarding and I haven't gone in a long time. Oh, that's nice. Uh, your favorite does partner to play with and you can't pick Paul. Missy Gannon. Yeah. We like Missy, too. Um, would you rather go scuba diving or just lounge on the beach? Scuba diving. We all know that you and Terra Bear make a stellar commentary team. But if you were forced against your will to pick somebody else to commentate with, who would you pick? Nate Doss. Yeah, Nate Doss. Uh, tournament you see yourself doing the best at this year? Um... I'm going to say the tournament I see myself doing the best at. I'm going to say Memorial. I actually see myself playing really well there. Um. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> what about it? <laughs> uh, and then our last one, I feel like this one has evolved. We've been asking this one for like a full year, and obviously you might be a little biased. Uh, the fabled battle of the Yuli brothers versus the Macbeth brothers. Yuli and Macbeth kind of both coming off a, a injury, but doing better. Maybe John and Pete have like a bigger, you know, play in this. Wait, that's like a really good question. I know. Who are you taking? Well, obviously I'm going to pick my family because blood is thicker than water. 
But yeah. I will say the reasoning is because John Macbeth, my brother-in-law, can throw lefty and righty, and they'll never see it coming. Because if they're losing, he could easily, or if they're winning, he could easily talk crap and be like, oh, I guess I'll start playing with my other hand, Paul, and he'll just do it. He'll just do that. <laughs> well, and no, they know, though. <laughs> they, you just, He's posted videos. You just you just gave up the... Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, I think everybody kind of knows. Like, yeah. he, he's posted videos before. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so with all that said, uh, rapid fire is out of the way. Uh, and the floor is yours. First of all, I just want to say thank you to Discraft. Um, I know that I have a dry sense of humor, and I always like to get a punchline in. But to be perfectly serious and honest, they have been a huge blessing for our, my family. When Paul um, talked about switching all those years ago, and he just felt like it was the right move for him and us and his company and everything, um, I really fought it because I'm not someone who really likes change and having the just trust that I had to have in him and just really being able to see him come alive and be able to create discs like the Malta and like the, um, Onyx and, you know, like the Luna and like all these different things, or I don't know, but anyway, coming out with like the Zeus and all those things he really just was able to be his true self and really just prove to the world if people didn't already believe it that he is just really a champion and just really amazing for the sport and discraft was has been nothing but supportive they've been really really patient with us um they've helped with so many different things just by being intentional and being a phone call away like he literally will talk to bob on the phone at 8 a.m 8 p.m 12 p.m 12 a.m and he'll just like spitball ideas and um having someone like that and being able to be a company like that is so um necessary for someone like him and being able to you know take me aside and express that they really want me on their team and um just be completely supportive of whether I am or am not on Discraft is just really, really, really awesome. And I just feel very much, um, you know, loved on and, you know, ready and motivated and encouraged. And they just really want me to like go out and be my best self. And they're not really interested just because I'm with him. Um, you know, like they value me as a person and as an individual and not just as like this package deal. Um, even though it is a pretty cute package deal, huh? <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so I just want to say thank you to them. If you guys are watching, which hopefully you are, because otherwise that would be awkward. Um, <laughs> watch this. <laughs> Bob will watch it. Thank you so much to Discraft for sponsoring me and supporting me and um, just being amazing. And I also want to um, encourage everybody out there with something that I've been telling myself lately and just with this off season i watch a lot of sports like and i listen to a lot of sports radio and i listen to more sports podcasts than i care to admit and i do it because a it's interesting b it takes your mind off of things it's entertainment but also they always leave you with like these golden nuggets of truth and as an athlete you can never have too many of those and so um one of them is nobody cares work harder and it's like this thing that colin cowherd um, on FS1 was saying for a long time, just about like Baker Mayfield and how he was this new player and he was coming from Oklahoma and he was going to play, you know, um, on the Browns. And he was like, you know, just kind of hyping himself up and talking about all this stuff. And, and he just talks about like for rookies or people looking to move up in a sport, like if you're not the most successful person in a room, like be quiet you know, listen to the people who are more successful than you. Don't be the loudest talker. Um, be humble enough to learn. And and also at the end of the day, nobody cares. Work hard. Like Tom Brady is celebrated in New England because he wins Super Bowls. And Tom Brady, if you're watching that, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
he has that mentality. Like it's never enough. And Paul has that mentality. And so I want everyone to kind of recognize that. Um, just care about it yourself and make that your reason to work harder. The other thing I want to say that I learned this year is um, um, the other thing I want to say that I just learned this year is um, the difference between like, uh, okay, so it's obsession is the difference between great and legendary. And that's also a Colin Cowherd quote. And it's literally so true. Paul is obsessed with the sport. And I used to get so frustrated at him when we started dating because I, it was still a game to me. Um, and it was still very much casual. And so I wanted to take my discs and I wanted to go to a course and I wanted to throw and I wanted to have fun and I wanted to do what everyone else was doing. Um, and for him, it's like, that's his job. So if he's going out to the course with me and we're having fun, but he starts missing cuts, it's not going to be fun for long. Trust me. <laughs> um, and so I really saw like his obsession and that's what's really, I think helped me get better in such a, I guess, short amount of time, if you can say that, um, is just becoming obsessed with the little details of the game. Um, and understanding that if you want to be great, you can win tournaments with bad form. You can win tournaments and you can make cuts with bad form and you can outplay someone with bad form and you can be out of shape and you can have a terrible diet and win tournaments. And you, you can, because people in disc golf, they do it all the time, but you're never going to be legendary if you do those things. Mm -hmm. um, and that goes for anything that we do. And so those are the two like nuggets of truth that I've learned in 2019. And I'm really, really excited for 2020 and just, all of the things that I'm about to learn um, in this year, I think it's going to be really awesome. And, and those are the kinds of things that I want to, that I'm so thankful for you guys for this platform is because I get the opportunity to share that. Um, and I think that's one of the things that's nice about me is that because I'm coming up in a spotlight and people are going to see the bad things and the good things, I can be encouraging to those people who are also coming up. Um, hopefully. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm um, thank you to just craft, obviously. And then like, I just wanted to say those two things. And thanks to my husband for teaching me a lot and putting up with me and loving on me and it's so crazy. But uh, yeah. Awesome. 2020. Yeah. Harrison, <laughs> So thank you, Hannah, for taking time out of your evening to join us. Uh, we're super excited to watch you on your 2020 tour. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. Don't forget to comment down below for the giveaway for that awesome fierce. And at the end of the day, guys, there's only one thing left to do. Make that putt. <laughs> <laughs> we practiced so many times. God. <laughs>